basically what we're doing here is uh, gathering together sixth form pupils from a number of local schools and the idea is to try and generate uh, and foster an interest in, in science. It is a huge privilege uh, to be able to welcome you all to uh, this conference here, joint conference between St. Edward's School uh, and the Oxford International Biomedical Centre. Um, and I'm hugely grateful to uh, Dr. Kendall Williams, who is, uh, most of some of you know, is our head of science here, for organising this again. It's, it's a real treat. And indeed, particularly for organising such a glittering panel uh, of people who are going to talk to you this morning and indeed with whom I hope you're going to have a really good discussion this afternoon. One of the great joys of being in Oxford uh, is that we have uh, access to uh, one of the finest university cities in the world and therefore some of the finest uh, university teachers in the world and today uh, here in the North Wall we've got uh, four uh, seriously important members uh, uh, of the Oxford uh, Biomedical uh, International Biomedical Centre uh, coming to talk to our pupils and indeed one of the great things uh, about this is that we can open this up to a range of other schools who are here as well. But my brief is to look at the genes bit, um, the um, nurture bit of the nature-nurture debate. And I've got particular enthusiasm for genetics, and there are some very particular properties of, of genetics that are really useful if you want to find out why certain people get disease and if you want to understand the basis of disease. And it's actually understanding the basis and the mechanism of disease that ultimately lets you come up with new treatments. Then we have a much more powerful analysis when you've got half a million people in comparison to looking at only, say, uh, 50,000 people. Um, and so amongst these people, there were almost 34,000 deaths from heart disease. You might wonder what this is. It's a plug in the patient's head. <coughs> the big Achilles heel of the artificial hearts was that they need a lot of power. So all the previous ones had lines coming out the belly. And these lines would move around because the belly is soft. Uh, and there's a lot of fat in some people's bellies. And the drive lines would break down and get infected. So we wanted to come up with a new way of putting power into the body that wouldn't get infected. And we had the idea of mimicking cochlear implant technology. Well, I think it's very important. I think we had an absolutely splendid morning uh, with three talks that, that covered how disease comes about, uh, what is the epidemiology of disease, and at the end, how you manage very difficult problems. Um, I first decided I wanted to be a doctor and a heart surgeon when I was only seven at school. And I must say there was no help whatever at that stage. Uh, most people just thought I was mad. Um, so if we can convey a little bit of the excitement and the dedication and, and so on that you need to do the cutting edge work uh, to, to your children, that, I think that's, that's just great. If you were studying like a family and a young woman got pregnant, would you then offer to like, test her baby before it was born? Most of the conditions we look at are not so disastrously bad that I would be at all minded or comfortable assuming that one should intervene with a pre-existing pregnancy. If, if There's been quite a lot of talk in the media recently about uh, getting a donor heart and then um, washing it with detergent and then uh, putting the um, stem cells from the actual a person who you're, who you're planning on implanting it into, onto the heart sort of structure, and whether you think that this is a sort of viable option that could genuinely be something we will be doing in the future. Implanting cells on a scaffold and making sheets of um, heart muscle is kind of something that's going on already. The Japanese have been 
out in front with that. That what with advances in things like stem cell research and growing tissues and organs outside of bodies, research using live animals might become not so much out of fashion as obsolete. In some circumstances, give a very good alternative. So I think there'll be some areas of work uh, where you could do the studies you want to do in, in, in cells that were growing in culture. Uh, I am in the upper six and I am doing the IB and um, I do, for higher level, I do, in, I do biology, chemistry, economics, and standard level, math, English, and French. So, okay, and what are you hoping to do when you leave St. Edward's? Hopefully, I would love to study medicine at University of Edinburgh, so um, I am working towards that, hence why I do biology and chemistry at of higher course, level. Yeah. So I'm working really hard. And how do you prepare for studying medicine? Are there, are there things you have to do outside school to yes. become familiar with it? Yes, because things about medicine is that it's more, it's, it's more than the grades, so mm. everyone gets the grades. And you have to do extra reading, you have to be genuinely interested because most people don't understand what they're getting themselves into. You think it's a fun loving you just save people and save the world but it's actually realistically is lots of hard work lots of practice and lots of studying and lots of having to sacrifice a lot of your life to that profession so it's more than just the grades it's about having the physical ability about having the mental capacity and about actually just sheer determination to be honest sure i imagine and how does something like today fit into your planning and your thinking? Yes, because um, today we, um, we learnt about the heart and we had lots of people coming in about new technology in the medical world. So it's about, because the fact that medicine is a field that's always changing, so we learnt about, the, um, about using artificial hearts or using um, artificial pumps as an alternative to heart transplants. So it's like insights into the world that is constantly changing and how we can constantly improve and um, increase the standard of living of people. So it was incredible because apart from the biological aspect, it was about ethical concerns with that because we, putting an, an artificial, as some people would say is not natural, putting like a machine in your body. But if you think about it, if it does increase and improve and help people, then it might be worth it.